Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and I have probably the most unusual reel that I've ever worked on. However, it may not be unusual at all in Europe. And uh, this reel is a Russian-made reel, and I can't even pronounce the the wording here. It looks like G G E N or I a B, and then we're getting into uh, some symbols in that that I just apologize for not being able to say. A Russian-made reel sent into me by a viewer in Europe who said that I would probably appreciate it. It was made in the CCCP and uh, the rest of it I can't translate. It's a nice little reel. It's got a cast housing. Uh, I'm going to guess without seeing too much of it that it might be pot metal or aluminum. It is a cast housing with a plastic side plate. And what's wrong with this reel is that, well, there's a little bumper, it's hard to see, there's a little bumper on the bale that's worn away that should be raised up. And this is not unusual for spinning reels. I forget if it was Penn or Mitchell or both that have used this bumper as a set for the bale that raises it up. Well, what's happening here is, uh, in this case, I just raised it enough that you can see we can set the bale, we can, we can trip the bale, but then what happens because the bumper is not here, on the back here, the trip lever winds up under the uh, bale arm on this side. And so when you go to try and move it, well it's stuck because you can't swing this due to the trip arm uh, being too low. Well, there's probably a repair for that. I'm thinking that I can either get a metal stud or I can get something else to replace this, this worn plastic here and uh, go ahead and do a um, epoxy on there to raise this up so that we have the clearance where this will not uh, interfere. Well, so much for the problem of the reel. Let's talk about all about the things that make this reel good and uh, well, <laughs> take it apart and show you how it's made. Nice sound anti-reverse. Does have an anti-reverse override to it. Can't wait to get inside and see what's going on. It is a uh, top drag reel and we're going to take this reel apart. We'll service it. We'll show you how it was made and uh, well, we'll see, uh, see what we can do to get this reel serviced and fishing again. I'm going to start by taking off the handle. It looks like I may need a washer under there. The handle was a little bit loose when we were doing that. And let's see if we can remove the adjuster. And while I'm doing this, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the channel if you like the auto reel repair, if you like to see the new and the unusual as well as the, uh, the commonplace. Well, I show how to service these and how to uh, keep them running for a long time to come. This is a good place to tell you to take pictures along the way. It's a very interesting spring here that's pulling back the, uh, the set uh, arm. And you want to note where the hole is that it mounts on both sides and just in case that spring uh, shoots. We don't need to do anything with that spring or that trip lever. We've shown you that it's working. But let's go ahead underneath. Let's see what's going on there. Let's take that, that section apart and uh, tune it up. Always interested in it. So if anybody uh, can translate, anybody knows a little bit more about this reel, I understand it was quite commonplace in Europe, and uh, kind of like everybody's real. And, uh, well, if you know a little bit more about it, I would appreciate uh, you adding to the dialogue in the uh, uh, comment section. All right, well, two screws are out that hold that plastic side plate. And this, uh, th this is kind of uh, loaded up with old greases. You can see how it's just caked there. But it looks like a pretty traditional design as far as fishing reels go. So let's uh, let's have at it. We're going to remove the screw that's holding the cross line lock in. That's what will ride on a pin on the main gear. And when it rides on that pin, it's going to oscillate because the pin is offset in the main gear. So it will push up and down as it rides. We'll show you a better uh, look at that once we uh, get rid of the, the old greases. Let's remove the axle shaft then. That came out relatively nice and easy. 
wipe that down. It's kind of hard to see the materials. I mean, it's steel, it's whether it's stainless or not, but uh, I don't see any issues with that. Here's kind of a fun thing. That uh, set screw for the crosswind block does not go all the way through. If you look on the back side, it's not there. So when you go to mount this to, to align that and put that crosswind block back in, you need to have that pointing towards you. Let's take that crosswind block off. It's grease choked, but you know what? The reel was running fine. I don't know what kind of grease is in there, but uh, you know what? It, uh, it, although it's caked up, it hasn't stopped the reel from working. All right, I cleaned that up. This is a symmetrical crosswind block, so it doesn't matter which side is up or down. Again, if you've taken pictures along the way, that's going to help you to identify uh, the orientation of pieces and parts if they're not the same. All right, I think we simply take the nut off now. Looks to be a 12 millimeter nut. And it looks to be, be Trying to figure out which way is which here. There we go. It's reverse threaded. So it comes off in a clockwise rather than a counterclockwise manner. And right now I'm being a little cautious. I really don't want to disturb the spring if I don't have to. So the nut is off. Now we should be able to lift up on the rotor. Once that rotor is off, I believe we can push down if it wasn't for that load of grease there, we could push down on the main gear. And while we're doing that, I want to make sure to clean the old grease. Get that out of the way. And you can see how it's just coagulated there. I want to push that down and then I want to clear the stud here so that we can pull that pinion gear out just like that. Once that's out, we can push the main gear out. Before you do that, make sure that you're in the neutral position or off position for the anti-reverse. Another good place to take a picture. This one uh, kind of looks like a setup that uh, you can have that flying spring. You can notice that the spring is just set in a case here on this side and just ledged in that little cavity there. So I would tell you if you're not careful and you pop this, that spring is going to fly probably back to Russia. All right, let's uh, take this off. Scrape the old grease. So my guess is this reel was uh, given up because it was that uh, faulty stud on the rotor there where it's just worn too thin. I'm, I'm sure I can't get parts for this reel. Maybe somebody else can, but I can't and uh, left here. There are answers. I've seen people put um, toothpicks in there. I've got all kinds of crazy things. There's probably a little hole in the uh, where that piece goes. Oh, I got lucky there. I just knocked that to the, the plus position. Didn't want to do that. Got lucky. All right, we're just cleaning up the case. The old grease is behind it. Probably some greases on the back here. It's actually very clean on the back here. There is a, a little trim washer, or shim washer there. Let's finish up getting the old grease off the main gear. That includes using a, a brush to pull the old grease out of the main gear's teeth. You'll see now that's not centered. And because that's not centered, when it rises to the top, it's pushing the cross wind and the axle shaft up. When it rises, uh, when it lowers to the bottom, it's pulling it down. All right, that's all you're going to do with the main gear. Now we want to reverse this process a little bit. And a lot of questions come up. How frequently should I service the reel? Well, it's obvious this reel hasn't been serviced in a while, and it may not have been serviced because of the issue with that, uh, that bump guard or bumper. But the, it should certainly be serviced sooner Rather than later, you shouldn't be in a situation where you're wondering how all of that grease got coagulated onto the wheel. Uh, it should be serviced, in my opinion, on a annual basis. And just by the length of this video, it's, you're going to see it just doesn't take that long to take care of your reels. And if you do, your reels will take care of you. 
Alright, we're going to put a good amount of grease. Use fishing reel grease. And uh, we'll just put the grease onto the place where it's going to slide through that bushing. And we'll put grease onto the teeth that's going to cause the rotor to go round and round. This is a zero ball bearing reel. Okay, with that uh, pinning gear back in, let's hold that and go to reinstall the rotor. There was that uh, bushing or the shim washer or washer period that went on the uh, pinning gear from this side. Notice that you have this uh, little stud back here. That's the trip. It's, that's where the, the bottom of that lever over here is going to reach. And we can put our rotor back on. And we'll probably knock off a series of washers there, and that's fine. We have a lock nut. And remember, we took this off in a reverse thread, so it's going to go back on in a counterclockwise manner. Once you get that nut started, go ahead and get your tool. You can use a deep socket here. One of the things that won't work is an open-ended wrench because you've got to reach inside the ball. Okay, take that. Once that's done, give it a spin. Make sure that it spins nice and easily, which it does. Once you've hand started the nut and you know it's going on square, take your socket. And you need to use a socket here. You can't use an open wrench because while well, it's not going to fit in to allow you to turn that. And once you do that, just tighten it up, make sure everything's spinning, and we can come down to the bottom now and work on the the balance of the reel. There's not much left from the uh, gear side. There is the spool left. I'm going to put a little bit more grease onto our stud for the main gear. I'm going to grab that crosswind block now. Remember that's symmetrical, doesn't matter which way it goes. I'm going to put that over the stud, just like that. And then we're going to find that axle shaft, put a light coating of grease on it. Anything more than a light coating of grease is just going to get uh, scraped off as it goes through the pinion gear. Find your hole that you need to align it with. Bring that through both. And then you need to, to visually sight the hole so that you can put the hold down screw in there. This is a flat bladed screw. Get your flat bladed screwdriver and drive that home. So if you have any questions on this reel or any reel, if you uh, leave them in the uh, comment section, I'll try to answer that for you. So that's the way it should go, lightly greased and uh, all set up there. At this point you can flip your anti-reverse dog back on, make sure that it works. And uh, we can put the cover back on now. I don't, uh, don't have an idea about when this reel was made. If I was to guess, it would be the 1970s. I'm just not sure. If anybody has any information on this reel and can share it with us, please leave the additional information in the comment section. It's a great, uh, great place for all of us to learn a little bit more about it. Okay, well, uh, let's uh, go ahead and put the second screw in. I'll come over and do the handle. And as we noted, in order to make this one cast easy and not get stuck as it's stuck now with this lever, we're going to need to address that bump guard issue there. And I don't have the answer at the moment, so I'm going to have to uh, just kind of play around a little bit with it. I'm just checking on the block here right now. We'll go put the handle on. This one was loose. I think it would benefit from a washer. I just uh, don't have that washer at the moment. Okay, let's see. load that up. Nice. 
All right, let's just see what we have for drag washers underneath here. And then we can kind of wrap this up. To get out the, the drag washers, we want to remove that clip that's holding it into there. So the, the basic manufacture of this reel is no different than just about every reel we've done along the way. Uh, we have a what appears to be a hard washer here. We have two metal washers. Okay? It's, we have a shattered washer in the middle. There you go. So that's an issue here. But you know what? I'll bet you we can find one to replace that. This this one's in pieces. And I'm one of those pack rats that when a reel finally can't be fixed any longer, well, some of the things I like to do is take the, the drag washers out of them and hold them for a reel that may need one later on. Well, here we go. Here's our opportunity. Okay, it took a while to find that one, but I did find one that matches up nicely. So we'll put that in on top of the one, put the other in, take that uh, spring clip now, find the slot, hold that clip because it can not shoot. It's got a lot of tension on this one. Work it so that it's seated properly, just like that. And let's go ahead and load that in. Adjuster back on. Tighten it down. Make sure it's holding. It's holding nicely. And uh, well, that's it. That's your reel. As I mentioned, we'll come back and we'll put this bump guard up. We'll get some kind of replacement here. Let's give it a fun time trip. And that's it. So I wish I knew more about the pronunciation of the reel. I'll go find a little uh, uh, washer here so that it'll hold the uh, handle a little bit more firm. And who knows, maybe I'll take it out in the surf and uh, I'll have everybody ask me, what is that reel that you're working on? And I'll apologize to them and tell them I can't pronounce it. So that's it. Whatever this is, it's a, a nice example of probably 1970s. Uh, it's a Russian reel. And that's been a lot of fun to work on and learn about. And I hope you've enjoyed it while we've been doing that. To all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything is that you do to keep us safe. And to everybody, please in, uh, enjoy your days fishing. Uh, make friends. Fix your reels so that they don't fail while you're out there. And have a great day. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.